Okay, without any further ado, we've got a, a short talk. This is a 20 minute talk. Jaime Sanchez talking about building an Android IDS on the network level. Jaime, take it away. Thank you. Hi, hello everybody. Uh, as you say, my name is Jaime Sanchez. We're, we're gonna, I'm gonna do this talk about building an Android IDS on network level. Um, I worked for security for about 10 years. I've worked for very uh, national and international companies as a specialist and advisor. Um, in my free time, I enjoy um, res doing research on security. And I work as an independent consultant. I'm from Spain. I, I, um, I've talked uh, in other conferences in Spain, like Rutetcon, in Paris, uh, in the arsenal of Black Hat, and maybe you can meet, me, with, meet with me in, in Derbycon on, on activity. Uh, well, um, I got a prop, uh, a prop of Hanover today. I don't know what happened last night. It's my first time in Vegas. Uh, tonight, uh, today, I wake up. I was married with two, with two strippers. Uh, <laughs> no, don't laugh. Don't blame vodka. I know the, the reason of this. Just blame aliens. I'm sure they forced me to drink. I'm from Spain. I don't like partying. So, <laughs> you know us. <laughs> So uh, we have 20 minutes before I get with my lawyers to get divorced. So let's get, <laughs> let's get down to business. The, the reason of this conference is uh, uh, Android has a great market share. Being popular, uh, being popular is not always a good thing because uh, as the mobile uh, device grow, so the incentive for attackers that are looking for new business model, uh, there are over 100 million uh, uh, Android devices. It was from just last year, and uh, have a market share of uh, nearly 50%. Um, and there are several techniques that are used to, to detect malware and detect attacks for mobile phones, but there is, I, have, I haven't seen any open source tool uh, to detect uh, and create patterns to, to locate this, this kind of attacks. So we have, uh, in the last years, we have seen several exploits, like the USSD exploit, several vulnerabilities for WebKit, uh, there are targeted malware uh, attempting to steal credential emails, and now there is a interpreter for Android. So I have to, I have to deal with this, uh, and I tried to make my first approach to solve this. And I took my Android, uh, my Android mobile phone, and I make a VPN tunnel with my computer. So I, I was trying to analyze all the traffic passing through my device. I launched the this Nord on on my computer to detect suspicious traffic. And I could also use uh, tools like TCP dump and make uh, all the analysis on the forensic I could. But, well, this kind of idea sucks, man. Uh, I have several problems because I have to, to, to take the traffic from my, from my mobile phone to my computer. That's a waste of, uh, of bandwidth. I couldn't act like, uh, like an IPS. I could detect all the attacks. I could detect all malware, but that was, uh, just after it happened. So that has no sense for me. Uh, there are a lot of signatures for Snort. There are signatures for MRG threats, but there are no so related with Android. So uh, the, other, the other fact important is that uh, we don't have any real-time notification for the user. So the user doesn't even know if, if, attack, if an attack is happening or is infected by malware or anything. So I continued with my life. I, I, I made a, a program called OS Fuller that it's a practical approach to defeat uh, remote fingerprinting. It's for active and passive fingerprinting, and it takes advantage of, of, uh, of a special target of IP tables called Q. And that's where I came with the idea of how to solve this problem. Uh, with this tool, I was able to modify in real time all the traffic that was passing through my computer. So I found a problem that is was that uh, the packets I want to, to capture are in kernel space. So the kernel the extension and the device driver right inside the, the kernel space, and I couldn't take that packets to modify in real time before the computer has it. I have to work in user space, uh, so I have my own uh, virtual memory, and I have no, no other option. So uh, for this approach to work, let me, let me show you a little bit of, of, the, um, of the travel of a packet uh, from the network car to the application. I call it how I made your packets. So the first thing, when the, when the kernel takes a packet, um, 
uh, put inside a five-step process. The first one is taking direct, directly from the network interface card and put it inside a, a buffer, and then it calls to uh, with a sub, uh, software or hardware IRQ, calls the CPU, uh, letting him know that there is a new packet. But the special thing here is that before it gets processed, uh, we have to pass through the chains of IP tables. I'm sure you, 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 every, everyone knows uh, the typical uh, target destination like accept or drop in. But here, here is the, the special thing I found to make my, my ADS and my tools. Just after the, the IP tables, uh, the packet gets through the IP layer, TCP layer, it has some uh, checks on the headers, and then the kernel put inside the application and, and to the corresponding socket. So, as I told you, uh, we have several targets for IP tables. You know, uh, you can accept packet, you can drop the packet, you can let the remote uh, computer know that you have dropped the packet, but there is a special one that is called queue, that means uh, pass the packet from kernel space to user space. So a little of, of theory is that uh, this queue delegate the decision of packets from kernel space to user space, so in user space you must have um, a listener that take care of every packet. That's because uh, uh, you have to issue a verdict for each packet, you have to ask, accept it, you can drop it, but you can uh, uh, modify in real time before it gets into the TCP uh, IP stack. You have to be re very fast because if the, if the queue gets full, all the other packets that you receive will be dropped. So, for summary, I'm capable of, of processing all incoming and all going traffic uh, inside my device. I made my tool and I have to do some proof of concept for Android. So uh, I, I, I thought I was able to, to make a tool like this. If I'm able to issue a verdict for every packet, maybe I'm not also acting like an IDS, I'm acting too like an IPS. So the first release of my tool was in Perl, then I moved to C, then I moved to Python, then I moved to C again. So who cares putting in the, the, this technology again? And then I get to Android IDS. This Android IDS is a first approach to create an, an open source software that it's a, a network IDS and a network, a network IBS um, that has to perform a real, tra a real traffic analyst and packet login on the uh, internet protocol. It's some features and things. As like you said, it's like a protocol searching, or protocol analysis, content matching, and content searching. Uh, it, was it would be great if you were capable of hooking to the syscalls of the Android device. I'm working on this because you could uh, reduce the, the amount of false positives. But uh, there is some problems finding the, the address of the table. There, is, uh, there, are, there are difference between the, the different versions of Android kernel. So this is something I have to work on. So the architecture of the IDS should be a sensor and should be uh, a server. The sensor uh, is installed in, inside our, our Android mobile device and run without human interaction. It's responsible for analyzing traffic. It should send some um, push message to the, to the mobile device so the, um, the, the user can know if it's, it's, it's having an attack or install malware. So I've done this with, a, with an application you will see that's called Notify My Android with the IP and I send the real-time notifications. So, it reports through the login server if you want. You can do it by syslog, you can create a VPN tunnel, and it should um, do some custom reactive uh, actions like dropping the packet, adding new rules to the, to the AP tables, or launch several scripts as we will see. And very important is that it should impose minimal, minimal overhead to the, to the device. On the other side, we'll find the, we'll find the server. The server is a Linux box, it's only responsible for for taking all the traffic. It should send the signatures, the updated signatures to the, to the device and store the events in the database. Another feature is that we can, uh, we can do the, the statistical analysis of the packets uh, in the server instead in the, in the mobile device because of the, of the power of the computer. And we can use uh, any CM or, or whatever you want to add uh, IP reputation and, and correlation for, for the attacks. So the first thing I had to do was protocol analysis. It's my day by day. 
So the anomaly packets, you know, there are some uh, re packets that do, do not conform the standards or have several errors in the, in the headers, and most of the devices in the network will almost drop them. Uh, this kind of uh, packets you can find in, in, in denial service attack, in scans, in worms, in virus, and several of them have some ano anomalies because of uh, programming uh, with raw sockets. So, with, uh, as example, you can see now that there is a, there is a TCP IP packet. This, it has several uh, flags activated. And it should, this, packet, this kind of packet uh, belongs to, to a network scanner and should be dropped, and it should be reported to the to the, to the server. So, as I told you, I have a tool. It, it was called OSPooler. Uh, it was uh, for defeating active and passive uh, fingerprinting. So, the first thing I have to do is like porting all my code because my, my, my tool was working okay. So, I was trying to detect and drop uh, packets from, from well known tools. In this case, it's NMAP, it's 16 uh, proofs uh, TCP, IDP, and ICMP. And, and I will show you how, how, it, get, how, how it detects the, the attack. In this case, you're seeing that, that we're connected through a uh, uh, VNC uh, to, the, to the mobile. We have to, to have the, uh, the device routed because we, we need to access to the IP table chains. In this case, we are, we are launching the, we are launching the, the IDS. It's, it's in login mode. You can see that there are, it's, it's logging all, almost every packet that has come to the, to the mobile device, and if you see when it finished, uh, finish now, the Nmap has detected that it has like a Linux box 2.6 or 3.0. In this case, we have only logged all the attacks. It has a, a notification. It is disabled to not to stop the the demo. And in this case, what we are going to do is to use the, the IDS to fool this kind of fingerprinting. I, we have to activated it, and it's in, in, in drop mode, so every packet is being dropped, it's being reported to the central server, and it's sending uh, full packets to the, to the attacker. You have seen now, it's a Sony Ericsson uh, a telephone. It's based on Linux 2.4, uh, but it works with, with any other signature. I have to work on, the, on, the, on this release. And now you can see that uh, through the Notify My Android, you have like the two alerts. One is for, for login, you have been scanned, and the second one is that we have put the, the IDS in, in drop mode and it's full in the, the scans. So the next thing I have to, to take care of was pattern matching. I'm not, I, I, I don't work for NSA, so I have to work my, by myself to to capture all traffic, and look for a fixed sequence of bytes inside almost every packet. This is a problem because some of the, some of the attacks are, are related to a well-known port, and if we have to inspect almost every packet, uh, we can f have some false positives. This can be solved uh, by using a stateful packet matching, but I, I'm still working uh, on it too, because uh, I want to search uh, for a pattern uh, through, very, through several packets, and and it's the only way to make it work. So, another thing I have to deal with was the signatures. Uh, there are l some signatures from er emerging threads for, for uh, Android, and I, I have to run an, an, an script to convert that rule from Snort to our format. In this case, uh, uh, it's only convert uh, uh, Snort friendly rules, and it can only, as we have, se uh, we have seen, we can only search for a specific pattern in every, uh, for a specific string in every, in every packet. We, we should work with preprocessors, we should uh, analyze all the flow, but uh, still working on it. Some of the things uh, of the exploits we have, we have seen uh, is the USSD uh, code. Uh, the USSD code is, uh, is a code that is entering into your phone to perform some actions. Um, it's used by the network providers to, to give the users uh, some access to some service like call forwarding and, uh, and, and other SIM functions. It's, it's very simple. Uh, it links the browser uh, to the phone application. That means that when you get to, into, the, into the web application and you have this code, uh, the phone without human interaction will show you the, the, the telephone application. So uh, this exploit uh, was published, uh, published uh, uh, one, one year or so ago, and we have uh, uh, several, um, 
web signatures, and we can detect it. In this case, I, I have to demo, I have to cut it down, but it has detected a, a WebKit code exploit, an Android browser remote crash. You, have, uh, you can detect the payloads, you can detect almost everything that you want. The last thing I, I, I wanted to deal with was the malware. There are a lot of malware for Android. Almost every malware has a, has a pattern. I've searched, in this case, is the SMS send. It's, uh, you can download it from here, and when, it, when uh, it, you get downloaded, it connects to the command and control server. You can find the, the string that it's using to connect to the remote server, and the string to find that packets is the rq.php. We could uh, just do those proofs, and we can do everything. If, if, we, if we have the, the pattern the malware is using, we can detect almost every malware we have. And in, uh, not only uh, detecting it, we can uh, drop all the, uh, the traffic that it's sending. On the other side, we have the meterpreter. Meterpreter, I, I thought you know, it's um, it's an uh, uh, extensible payload for for Metasploit. It communicates over a stager socket, and and it has some features like uh, command history, uh, tab compensation, some channels, some mod. So uh, now there is an Android version. What I have done is creating a, 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 a package for Android, installing in, inside my own system, and, and try to, to detect all the traffic that it's, that it's having. So the, the processor is the same. We have to, to get inside our, our Android device. We have to be root, and we should uh, uh, launch the script. Uh, in this video, there is, there is no, uh, we, we can see how was the software installed, but there are several methods for signing the, the, this kind of malware, um, and, and it will only have to take uh, a, a listening socket for, for Metasploit and just connect it, connect it back from the, from, the, from the Android device. So now we're waiting uh, till the, the socket gets open. And when it does, uh, what we're going to see is just connect and see if we can detect all the traffic it's passing. So just push the button, and we have we have found it. We we can see that, that there is several commands that it sent from the from the uh, metapreter to get the system information and so. And we have several commands. We are we are running it one by one. Uh, and when you decode the, the the channel, it's very easy to to find which command is being executed. And the fun thing is that uh, uh, I couldn't done a, uh, a proof of concept now, but uh, you can use like, some kind of honeypot because you are able to, to modify the packet in real time. So if you get infected, you can fool the, the attacker too. You can uh, show whatever, uh, whatever directory you want. You can send it pictures when he's asking for the welcome list, or you can send it um, any audio file when he's uh, it's trying to attach to the, to the microphone. In this case, you see that it's very simple. You have all the commands, but not only are we going to log this, we, have only, we, are, only, uh, we, we are able to, to drop the packet too. In this case, I'm not going to drop all the session. You see that it's working. Um, and what I want to do is only drop the packets related with the webcam. So now you can see that there is no, no way to access to the webcam, and the IDS is blocking all the traffic. So. With this, uh, that's the, the, the way I found to, to create an IDS. You don't have to depend on Snort or commercial appliance that uh, cost like $20,000. You can do it by your own, and the only uh, thing you have to work is in, in having a great signature database to work with this, because uh, Android devices are the next uh, target uh, for attackers. So that's it. Thank you.